In this video, I'm going to go over solutions to another one of the exercises. I recommend that folks attempt all the exercise problems before looking at this video, the solutions here. The material should be a review of the content we just covered to see how well you understand it. I'm in the folder part03 matrices underscore one in the file part018 or part18 exercise matrices. You can find direct links to all these files in the video description. First question is find the overall sum of the values in matrix A right here. There's a variety of ways to do this. These are a few that I can think of off the top of my head. This first one is just the sum function of A with an extra input all right here in quotation marks. I'm not 100% sure if this works in Octave. All the rest of the code that I demonstrate in this exercise should work exactly as written in Octave. It's just some of the functions in Octave don't support this all input. Uh, this next one is where I'm taking the sum of the sum of A. Now, why would I need to do it twice to get the result that I want? Well, because pretty much all the functions in MATLAB and Octave that operate on matrices operate on a per column basis. So if I just ask for the sum of A, I'm going to get three separate values, one for each column. But if I take the sum of that, then I basically just get the overall sum. And finally, A parentheses colon is a way to convert a matrix into a column vector. It basically just stacks all the columns of the matrix on top of each other. And since sum and other functions operate on columns, there's only one column, it'll get the overall sum. Continuing on down, what do we do if we overwrite clear? So the problem is that now I can't use the clear command to empty my workspace because clear means the number seven. Now this is actually slightly different in Octave as in MATLAB. So in MATLAB, I can just say clear clear and that will work perfectly. And you can see it just disappeared from my workspace over here. But the other thing that I can do in both Octave and MATLAB is I can right click on clear and then say rename. And I don't know, I'm just gonna call it X, all right. And now my clear command is gonna work perfectly. So if we keep an eye on the workspace, I hit enter, all that content disappears and now it works great. Uncomment and fill in the blanks in the code below to find the max to display the maximum value in the first column of the matrix M and also the row of that value. All right, so I'm gonna uncomment this line right here. And the idea is that in these square brackets, I need to define two variables. Now I prefer to use good variable names. So I'm gonna name my first variable uh, maxes. So plural of max, I suppose, and then indexes or rows because it's gonna be what row the maxes appear on. Since M is a two column matrix, I should get two results for both of these. Now we just wanna display the largest value in column one. So that's going to be maxes parentheses one because that's the index of that first column. And then similarly to figure out what row uh, that maximum appears in, we can just say indexes parentheses one. We run that code. All right, so largest value is the number eight. There it is right there, and it is in the third row, and that is uh, accurate. Use the following vectors to make a four column table. So I'm gonna put these into a four column table. So this is just a review of how to create tables. Name some variable, don't name the variable table, otherwise you will get screwed up. And then you might think, oh, just put each of the vectors into the parentheses, and that is almost, but not quite correct. And the problem is that it appears out weirdly like this. So if you get some kind of weird output like this, probably all you need is to transpose your vectors. I'm just gonna use the apostrophe because I'm a little bit lazy to transpose each of those vectors. And then also I'm gonna add in column names and finally display out the table. There we go. And there's a nicer looking table. Sort each column of the following random matrix independently. Then sort all rows by the third column. Display your results. Since random numbers are involved, you will get different results each time. Okay, so if I just want to sort the columns independently, and let's actually start off by displaying out random at here. In fact, this is also a good place to briefly change my format to double spaced. And then just at the end of this section, I'll just convert it back to single spaced. So format loose for double spacing. I'll display out the matrix. And then I want to sort the matrix and display that out. So I'll display out the sorted matrix. And if I want to sort specifically by that third column, I actually don't want to use the sort function. What I want to do 
is I want to use the sort rows function. And I want to sort by column three. Let me resize and try that again. All right, here's my original. Here is sorted all the columns independently. So let's just look at the third column here. So it should be 1138, and it is. But like, let's look at the three there. So there's a seven over here, seven over there, 7637, seven, right? Those values may or may not appear adjacent to that three, depending on the values in the other columns, right? That is not the same row as what I started with right there, because all the columns got sorted independently. Now, if instead I just sort by column three, then seven, six, seven, three, four, two, it is going to be the same values in that row as what I started with up here, although it doesn't quite fit on the screen, but you can check that for yourself. Uh, there's the solution code right there. Continuing on down. All right, multiple choice here. How do you change the value 999 in this matrix into two? And there could be more than one answer. Now, one way to help us answer this is this semicolon right here means move down to the second row. So it's the same as this matrix right here. And we could even line up the commas, make it a little bit easier to read. And so then we see, ah, this 999 is in row two, column two. So C is therefore correct. But interestingly, A is also correct because the numbering of matrices, if you're just using a single index, goes down the columns before moving to the right. So one, two, three, four. And you can test it out. This one will work. This one will also work. Those are correct. Continuing on down, create a vector of multiples of seven from zero through 70, and then display it. So this to me suggests use of an interval. So I'm going to say V equals zero colon seven colon 70, and then I'll display it out with a display. Uh, it's a little hard to read. Let's transpose it with an apostrophe. All right. That looks like multiples of seven from zero to 70. Continuing on down. Create a vector containing values counting down from 100 by fives, then display it. Now it doesn't say how far down I'm supposed to go, so let's go down to zero. That seems reasonable. So v equals 100 colon counting down by fives colon. Let's go down to zero, and then we'll display it. And again, I should have transposed it because it's easier to read. All right, and that looks correct to me. Create a vector of five evenly spaced values between 50 and 1,000. Now, because there are five total values, I want to use linspace to let it figure out what the spacing needs to be for me so that I don't have to calculate it, which I could do, but I don't feel like it. So V equals linspace starting at 50, ending at 1,000, and total count of five total values. And there we go. Now, I, the spacing turns out to be 237.5, which, you know, it's easier if we just let MATLAB calculate that for us. All right, optional challenge, but I'm just going over solutions here, so I'll do it. Use log space to generate a vector of five exponentially spaced values from 1 to 100. So log space is a little bit different. It's somewhat similar to lin space, except instead of just we add the same amount each time to get the next value, we multiply the same amount to get the next value. And also, we don't put in 1, 100 for the starting values. We put in 10 to what power would be 1? Well, that would be 0. And 10 to what power would be 100? Well, that would be 2. And then, comma, 5 total values. And then we can display it out. Great. So apparently, our multiplication, our multiple that we want here is 3.1623. And you can even see, okay, I start with one, multiply by that value, and I get the second value, there it is. I multiply that value times the same value, and I get 10, great, and I multiply that by 10, obviously I get this, uh, and then you multiply that again by that same value, and you would get 100. Use log space to generate a vector of six exponentially spaced values from 0 0.01 to 1,000. All right, so very similar, so I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste. But then I want to start at 0.01. 10 to what power is 0 0.01? Well, it's actually negative 2. And then 10 to what power is 1,000? Well, that's 3. And then I want 6 total values. And there we go. Continuing on down, copy 23, 3, and 9 from the vector into a new vector and display it. Okay, so here's V. I'll name my new vector W. And W is going to be from V the values at positions 2, 
4, and 6, and then I'll go ahead and display it out. And there they are. There are other ways to do this. Um, another way is I could say 2 colon 2 colon 6. It's pretty much the same amount of typing. So 2, stepping up by 2 until we get to 6. And let me just clear this off, but I will get the same result, and there it is. Copy 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 from the vector below using an interval and display the results. Okay, so this time it's explicitly asking me to use an interval, use that colon notation. And the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is right here in the middle. Let's count. Index 1, index 2, index 3, index 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 4 through 8 is what I'm looking for. Colon 4, 4 colon 8, excuse me. And there we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or just easier to read, like so. Copy 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 from the vector below using an interval, display the results. I'm gonna start off just by copying this because that saves me a little bit of time. And the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it's basically every other one starting at the second one and ending at, again, I think the eighth. So let's say two colon two colon eight. Let's see if that works. Uh, so I missed the 5 there, so I needed to go up to 10. Of course, yeah, because 2 through 10. Cut those in half, you get 1 through 5. And there we go. Which of the following does not necessarily print out the bottom right value from the matrix named values? And let's go see what our options are right here. So imagine that we have a, a matrix named values, and you could create one to test this out. Display values, parentheses, end, comma, end, and then close parentheses. That absolutely will display the bottom right value from the matrix named values. So that one is good. That one works. This one right here starts off by using the size function to determine how many rows and columns there are in our values matrix and puts that information into R and C and then displays out values parentheses R comma C. This will also work. This one, this part C, will work in some circumstances, but not all circumstances. And in fact, it will only work if values is a square matrix, if the number of rows in values is the same as the number of columns. Otherwise, it, may, it will not work correctly. All right, copy the second row of M into a new vector. Okay, so V equals from M, the values in the second row, comma, colon to represent all columns. And then if I display that out, I'm not going to transpose it. I get, no, sorry, if I display V out, I get all those twos from that second row. Copy the bottom right two by two submatrix from M into a new matrix. I'm going to just name my new matrix submatrix and set it equal to M. And let's see, there's two rows and five columns. So rows two through three. And columns four through five, I think will be a two by two matrix. Let's run it. And there we go. So there's the bottom right two by two of values from M. Let's actually further verify that just by displaying out M. All right, there's M. There's the sub matrix. You can see the values right there. That works great. There are other ways to do this and probably my preferred way to do it would be, and I know this is a lot more typing, but what's nice about this is that it will work in all circumstances. And what I mean by that is, no matter the dimensions of M, this code will grab the bottom right two by two, guaranteed. So I'll run it again. M got squished, but you can see the results right there are the same as before. Because end minus one is gonna be the second to last row, through end, the last row, end minus one on the right side of the comma is gonna be the second to last column, through to the last column indicated by end. All right, replace the zeros with ones in the following matrix using indexing and intervals. So to do this, we would say M parentheses, rows one through two, comma, columns, one through end, all of them. Actually, no, sorry, uh, that would work, but you could also just say colon for all columns. And MATLAB actually lets you get away with just equals one. And as you can see, it's, it's just replace those values with all ones. The reason it looks, the reason it's stacked here is because I didn't suppress this output. So if I suppress it, there is the three by four matrix, uh, but filled with all ones. Now, if you did something like the ones function and said two rows and four columns, that would also work perfectly. So if I rerun it, that works perfectly. 
If you actually just typed out a matrix of ones, that's a bit tedious, um, but that also does work. Uh, it's just that if you're only filling in a single value, you could just put that single value and MATLAB sort of understands that it, that it should copy that value over each of the values that are being replaced. Continuing on down. All right, a little bit more complicated. Replace the zeros with ones in this matrix. So similarly, it's just practice indexing. Where are these zeros located? Well, they're located in rows two and three, columns also two and three. And we could just set it equal to one. And there we go. There's just the ones right there. Or we could have done, you know, a two by two of ones with the ones function. If I could find the comma on my keyboard like that, a uh, variety of other ways to do it. Continuing on down, multiply every number in the following vector by three and then divide each number by two. So this is V equals and the V equals is important. We want to replace the original values with this new calculated result. Three times V, divided by two. Great, and there's my results right there. Now, just to be safe, I think it's a good idea to get in the habit of putting dot star and dot slash. Now, these are scalar values. They are single values rather than vectors. So we don't really need the dot operators, but I think it's a wise idea so that we don't make mistakes later on. Also, it might be a good idea to put in parentheses. I mean, the question really emphasizes that we want to do the multiply by three first and this will emphasize that that is the case, even though order of operations did it correctly the first time as well, the way we wrote it. Continuing on down, multiply every pair of numbers in the following vectors using dot star. All right, so when we're multiplying two vectors together pairwise, like the two times the one, the eight times the two, zero times the five, and so on, we really wanna make sure to use the dot star operator. Also note in a comment the error you get if you accidentally use star. Okay, so let's just see. V star W. So this is the mistaken one. And the error we get is incorrect dimensions for matrix multiplication. I will be covering matrix multiplication in a later video, but not yet. That's not what we meant to do. What we meant to do was just do an element wise or pairwise multiplication. And there are our results here. Create a vector V of the appropriate size so that the following composition will work. Uncomment and test. All right, so we're just trying to put together M with another vector V right here in this line of code. Semicolon means they're actually gonna be stacked vertically. So I would maybe write it like this to emphasize that fact. Now V is supposed to be a vector and it can be any values that we choose. Uh, we just need to make sure there's four of them because we're stacking it below M and M has four columns. So I'm just gonna make this really easy and just say V equals one, two, three, four. And that should work out perfectly. And there it is right there. Continuing on down, create a matrix. Create a matrix M of the appropriate size so that the following composition will work and result in Q having eight rows and four columns. Uncomment and test. Okay, so this time we've got a four by two matrix and we wanna create a matrix M that we can stack alongside and below Q to end up with an eight by four. Now, that means that we actually need M to have exactly the same dimensions as Q because we're gonna need two columns plus two more to get a total of four, and we have four rows plus four more to get eight. So if I wanna be really lazy, the best way to do this is to just set M equal to Q. Comment out that. And let me resize my window and try that again. And there we go. It's just four copies of Q, but the question was just how can you create an M? What do the dimensions need to be to stack it together? Now, just to emphasize where the M's got put, let's change those to zeros and rerun. All right, so you see the original Q in the upper left. There's a copy of M to the right, copy of M below, and a copy of M to the bottom right. And that is the end of this exercise.